I don't want to spend too much time. Um, but it started. Um, hi, my name is Stefan. Um, I'm the developer ecosystem manager um, for IoT at Software AG. I have with me today Nick. Um, who is a senior IoT analytics, analytics consultant in the GCC. Um, and together we will um, spend one hour to give you an overview about the continuous integration and continuous delivery with you or for Comolosity IoT. Um, before I start, a um, few things. Um, um, the main agenda will be that uh, we will start with the concepts of CI, CD. Um, I, before I do that, um, I have some stuff I want to communicate to you regarding the developer ecosystem and developer event series. So this is the first slides I wanted to show you. Um, after the concept part, um, I will hand over to Nick, who will give you a practical example um, how uh, build automation and deploy automation can be um, implemented in a web development. Afterwards, I will open the mic. If you have any questions so far, please use the chat um, to, to ask your questions there, and later on we will answer them. Um, as I mentioned, I'm the um, developer, developer ecosystem manager for IoT, which is a pretty new role. Um, and here we have the main focus um, on the IoT developers in, in far, four dimensions, which is actually content, um, which we provide in several um, communities. Um, we have the access dimension, um, where we actually take care about communities like a developer portal or the GitHub organization for open source content. Um, we have the exchange dimension, um, where we focus on um, communities where we as user can exchange and we have the events which is actually the event today um, I'm trying to um, organize a developer series event for the IOT but also developer meetups hopefully later a uh, future in the future and also hackathons and other events I try to organize there just to give you an overview um, in which context this event has been organized um, there's one thing I wanted to um, point out. Um, since last week, uh, we had the international user group in, in the hack, um, and there we have been launched a new developer center, uh, not only for IoT, but for all our software AG products, but also, of course, for Comolosity IoT. Um, please go there, um, have a look. Um, it's pretty new that we have now uh, a single point of access for technical developer people where they can find all the relevant content, uh, content um, meaning videos, trainings, how to guides, but even links to the tech community, but also of course the events which are scheduled uh, in the future. Give it a try, have a look in the visit there. Also, maybe you have recognized uh, some of you um, we have the tech community. Um, since a small update from our side, uh, since beginning of June, there's much more activity there. Also, if you don't have any account, please create yourself an account, have a visit there, um, and be part of the community. And uh, last but not least, um, this is actually the, the developer series we are part of today. This is now the, the CICD event for today. Um, but there will be much more events in future. Um, if you're interested, um, go there, register yourself on the IoT developers groups, and you will be informed uh, about all upcoming uh, IoT events. So far from the developer ecosystem. Now, now let's get started with the CI CD concepts. Continuous integration, continuous delivery. This is the topic of today. Um, not everybody of you know what this means, uh, I guess. So this is actually an overview slide. Basically, it means that you have um, in your projects, you, you use some things like a code repository where you have versionized your code, the software code. Um, you have um, some things like we call the test automation that you 
um, have your source code not only checked in a repository, but it will be automated testing um, on, uh, on different branches. We have things like build automation, meaning um, once you have checked in the code, it has been tested, you can build your, um, your code into deployable artifacts. And of course, uh, the last one, the deploy automation. Uh, once you have built a deployable artifact, you can automatically or manually um, deploy the artifacts uh, to the target systems of your choice. Um, all these four are the main things we consider as continuous integration and continuous delivery or continuous deployment. Um, the main benefits of these uh, four dimensions are on the hand, I would say, um, you can actually automate your whole um, software development process. We also call this um, CI/CD pipeline, meaning um, you have used these four dimensions to, to maintain your code, test your code, build your code, deploy the code on a very high automated level. So this will increase, of course, the development speed at all. It will also increase the, the quality of your of your code because you will um, have tests and test coverages uh, and uh, can see how good is your code you have Ching, how good is your your test automation. And in the end, the overall outcome is you don't have even have better quality, but speed also you can um, release more more frequent um, releases of your software. Um, so these are the main benefits. Um, let's go on um, and switch to the Comolosity IoT context. In the Comolosity IoT context, we have multiple artifacts we can think um, of we, can, we have to develop as part of an IoT solution. The first one are microservices, uh, which can be deployed on the edge or on the cloud in Comolosity IoT. The second one are analytics models, um, which can be deployed in the analytics builder or uh, in EPL app. Um, but also the machine learning models. Um, we also have um, agents, which are mainly running on the devices or on gateways, uh, which are the main connectivity to the cloud or to the edge. And we have um, web apps and widgets, um, which are the user interface uh, for Comolosity. Um, this includes, of course, full-fledged uh, um, web apps but also widgets uh, to extensions for the cockpit or uh, widgets to extend existing apps like the device management or brandings and so on. Um, the main um, message here is that for all these artifacts, um, we support that they can be integrated to your CI CD pipeline. And how this can be done, um, I will show you shortly. So having um, an architecture, to um, actually see where these artifacts are deployed and running. Um, so on the right side, we have the cloud um, where we, we have most of the artifacts uh, deployed. We have server-side agent, microservices, analytics models, and web apps. On the edge, we have the same, but it's not running in the cloud, but most likely on a local side uh, on offline near the devices. And for the agent and analytics models, we have the, the gateway where probably the Synergy is running or other um, agent software is running and we um, can deploy there or we have to develop there. And sometimes also um, we have, of course, devices where the device agent is embedded. Therefore, it's kind of di difficult to um, deploy the, the, the agent there, but of course, this is also a use case. Now let's switch to the system landscapes um, of Comolosity, which um, can occur and we suggest you have. Um, I call this the minimal environment um, setup you can have uh, in your IoT project. Um, of course, this is different in each project, but this is, I would say, a common pattern we see very often. Um, let's start from the left to the right. Um, most likely we have a development tenant. A development tenant is most likely unstable. So they deploy all the artifacts there which are in development phase. Um, so most likely properly working, not stable working. Um, you de deploy them in a, in a very often frequent way. Um, there are mainly unit tests running, but no integration tests are performed when you de deploy to the development tenant. Um, and 
basically there are no real-time data there. There's maybe some device, test devices or development devices connected to the development tested, but the development tenant itself is just there to, to test your unique, uh, your single um, fragment or artifact you want, you have to deploy it there and test it in itself, if it's self-containing and if it's working. The next phase, um, once you have um, done the development, um, then the deployment is done to the test tenant. The test tenant is considered as an environment that should be stable as production um, from, from the requirements. Um, so um, only if our development art or developed artifacts succeeding some tests in our pipeline, like unit tests or integration tests, somehow um, they should be test uh, they should be deployed to the to the test tenant. Afterwards, we have some very often some manual user testing, end users testing the functionality, see if they are still finding finding some bugs. We also perform some integration tests, the whole chain from device to to Cobolosity, even maybe there's an edge edge involved to the end user. Yeah, so this is what, what we call the integration integration test, and we have partially or very similar data to the production environment. Um, even there, it's not possible that we have all the devices, of course, connect, connected to the test tenant, but we can work with simulated devices here, and we can also work with simulated data uh, on the test tenant. Uh, once you have passed the um, the test, all the tests in the test tenant, um, I call it the the IoT solution release, uh, which is then um, announced, and this release. Um, is then deployed to the production tenant. Um, the production tenant is where all your customers and end users are working on. Um, it should be very stable. Uh, there should be no downtime, of course. Um, uh, and all components which pass all the pre-tests um, in all the other environment I just mentioned, they will be only deployed as part of a release to the production tenant. For the Comolosity um, in the cloud environment, it's um, very difficult sometimes because um, some of you already have a, a tenant on Comolosity.com or maybe have two tenants or three tenants. Um, but also um, we have, of course, we, we, we further improve our platform itself. Um, so we have new features, we have bug fixes, we have security fixes, and um, everything, of course, sometimes um, we have some dependencies on new development um, for web development, but also microservice development. And um, from, a, from an end user perspective, using the platform, you sometimes want to test this before it is actually deployed to the Comolosity.com tenant. And therefore, we have an instance we call EOLatestComolosity.com. And the EO latest um, instance is, um, is uh, an instance with is one plus version of the existing um, um, Comolosity.com instances. Yeah, and I just say it's not only Comolosity.com, but it can be US or APJ.Comolosity.com, but all of these instances. We have the EO latest, and we have here um, um, uh, one future release uh, there, which can be used, of course, to to start your development task, start your testing of these new features, um, and once, of course, this um, new release is then uh, deployed from our operations to our Comolosity.com, you can deploy this. Um, directly to your production tenant. This is one option, but also, of course, you can go this way that you say, okay, I do a test on the EU latest first on my test tenant, but I can also do another test, integration test on the comolosity.com, and then I deploy this to the production tenant of comolosity.com. But this is um, a flexible way. But here, this is the option with the EU latest we offer to our customers to preview some new features um, of our cloud instance. On the on-prem versions and or dedicated cloud versions, this is kind of different here, yeah, because um, on-prem versions are not handled um, by our operations sometimes. Um, for dedicated clouds, of course, the operations is still responsible. But we have different release cycles um, on how we how we ship releases fixes to the to the instances, and most likely you as a customer decide when a new release should be deployed to the test instances. 
And therefore, um, it should be handled like this, that we, of course, have not only one instance, but hopefully three or two at least, um, where we have an instance. On the instance, again, we have our development tenants. Uh, on the test instance, we have our test tenants, maybe for several customers. And for the production tenant, we also have the production tenants, maybe for our customers. And the way it should be that we have the platform releases first, deployed on development, then to test, then to production. We do our testing of our solution uh, based on the new features and releases here on the tenants. And for the IoT solution, it's the same way as in the cloud. We do the development um, deployments uh, in, in the development tenants. We do the, the tests, integration tests in the test tenants and the production tenants. Uh, they are our customers. We don't touch them very much and very often. So there's a new challenge um, for the cloud um, that we have um, for Comolosity clouds. We have at least the target that we uh, ship every quarter a new major release. And uh, for you, if you are having some custom um, web application, microservices, um, and so on, um, and there are some dependencies on, on, on the web applications and uh, microservices, um, you have the challenge that you upgrade them at some times. Of course, it's, it's most likely not necessary that you upgrade them um, on every quarterly major release, uh, but at some time um, you have to um, test them and upgrade them because you, you are building up, uh, I would say, a stack. Yeah? So there, in any, with every release, any more changes are coming there and the test will be much more complicated um, and you have to work much more if you do this quarterly. Uh, and what you actually do is, I just mentioned, you have to upgrade your apps. Um, you have to check, is there something new? Maybe I have to upgrade um, my microservice because there's a new API. I have to perform my unit test. Maybe I have to update my unit test. I have to perform the integration test. And of course, I have to do the deployment on every quarterly release. And manually, this is actually not possible. And here we come again to the CI-CD concept. This can be only achieved if we use automation on a highly level. Uh, and this is why we should use in, in, in IoT projects um, the CI-CD concepts and the pipeline to actually achieve this in, in your project. Now let's talk about tools and tooling for the CI-CD. This was more like the theoretical part. Um, for the tooling, um, the main thing I wanted to take away from the session is that we as Comolosity or Software AG, um, we provide not the complete CI CD tooling for, for your project, but we make it possible with all the artifacts I just, uh, just um, presented to you, um, that you can in integrate it to your existing pipelines. Maybe you already have some other projects. Um, you can still use the same tooling um, maybe you have already in-house um, and add your new pipeline for Comolosity IoT or integrate it there. Um, and here, I don't want to go through all the tools. I just write it down what we were from a project perspective, we have some um, experience with. Um, these are the main things for the code repository. Mainly we use GitHub. Uh, in the past, we used for internal development also Bit, Bitbucket. Um, GitLab is also an alternative um, and so on, um, but I don't want to go in detail again. Um, from the development process, um, from our experience, uh, you should have at least a process in the development. Yeah, This is for the takeaway or from this slide. Um, you should not be chaotic in the development. Um, there should be at least a trunk-based uh, development that you have one master or call it trunk, um, that you have short-lived branches like feature branches where you do the development and then you merge it every time you, you have the feature implement and merge it back to the master trunk. And there you do all the, the build automation, the test automation, and from there you do the, do the deployment. This is why I'd say the, the common approach we suggest you should do. If you want to have it much more complex or because you have a much more complex project, there's also, of course, Gitflow. Um, Git flow is a difference to trunk base that we have not short lived branches, but more long lived branches. We have a developed branch versus long lived. We have feature uh, branches and we have release branches, which make us from, a, from an organizational perspective much more harder to maintain. 
but also of course you have more flexibility on on and more um uh, possibilities to see what else actually is going on there yeah so it's actually your choice what you use trunk based or git flow at least one of them you should have looked to and you should also implement in your in your it project from our side for the build automation, um, there are, I would say, common tools like Jenkins, um, which is very common used also in the cloud is GitHub Actions. We will also have an example later on um, where you can see how we use this. There are also tools like Travis or Team Foundation Server. For test automation, um, there, of course, this really depends on the artifact we want to deploy. If you're talking about uh, a Java microservices, we have different tools. If you talk about um, web development, again, we have different tools um, for test automation because then we need something like uh, maybe browser testing tools or browser plugins to test the user interfaces. And for microservices, we maybe have things like JUnit or we even use JMeter to test our APIs on a performance level. Um, um, but here again, of course, you can uh, use GitHub Actions mainly. You can also use GitHub CI CD, um, your choice. And for the deploy automation, um, it's the same tools as we have for build automations. Again, Jenkins, GitHub, and GitLab CI CD. Can use. Uh, again, I, I say it again. Um, this is just a suggestion. It's not like the tools we are supporting. We are, we are um, with our open approach of the Comulosity IIT, um, we support any tool of your choice because we have APIs which can be uh, integrated in your, in your pipeline, but also we have tooling, um, which I will show you now, which can be used. This is also an option to be used and can be also used to make your life much more easier in your in your building your your pipelines. Um, as one example, there's a Comulosity CLI. This is an open source project by a colleague of mine. It's Ruben who have developed it. There was already uh, an event um, at the beginning of this year where he presented the Go CLI Y CLI, which is a powerful tool um, to actually use the API of Comulosity, um, generate simulated data. Um, I don't want to go into much detail, but deploy artifacts, deploy applications, and so on and so on. It's a very powerful tool which can be used uh, in, in, uh, in our GitHub, uh, in our CI CD pipeline. Then, of course, we have the microservice SDK. Um, this does not only help to develop our microservices, but we also have a microservice SDK plugin for Maven, which can be used. Um, um, also in our pipeline that we can build our, our microservices and of course so we build actually a Docker container and also use this to deploy the container to our target tenants, of course. Basically the same we have for the web development. Uh, for the web development, we have a um, Comulosity Web SDK or we also call it CLI, which can be used um, that you can build your web application automatically and you can also use it, of course, to deploy it um, to your to your tenant if you want to use it. Again, this is an option. You can use them, but you don't have to. Of course, you can still use the API we provide from our platform. Um, maybe you just use the CLI to build it and deploy it, deploy it maybe otherwise. Your choice how you build your pipeline. So to sum this up, um, the concept part of CI/CD for Comulosity IoT. Um, with the open concept of Comulosity IoT, um, we support the, your existing CI/CD pipelines and CI/CD tooling. Yeah, so not to force any any to use any tools we suggest, um, or you only have to use this kind of tooling. You can use any third-party tools you want to. And integrate to um, to your CI/CD pipeline. Now this is achieved because we have the SDKs, we have the open APIs, uh, and therefore we have this kind of openness here. Um, you can use this tooling, and we can or we should implement the CI/CD process or pipelines, um, not only for cloud environment but also for the edge, of course, but also for the on-prem. Um, also for the agent development. Um, therefore, we, we have this for all editions we provide from the software edge Comulosity IT perspective. Um, 
this point I already said, it's, it's some kind of enterprise integration. With that, um, we have, of course, in the end, um, uh, because of the short maintenance cycles, um, this is actually the slide which I said, we have to automate our CI CD pipeline if we have customization made to our platform. Um, and this makes it much more handleable for us to maintain our solution. That is all from my side. And now I will hand over to Nick, who will give you an overview um, how build automation and deployment can be done in a web development, as an example. Thank you, Stefan. Just to double check, can you hear me loud and clear? I can hear you. You have to share your Perfect. screen. Perfect. Sure. Um, And now you should be able to see my screen. Yeah, perfect. All right. So, Stefan, thank you one more time for an excellent introduction to CI CD concepts. And um, I'm here to talk um, about this one specific example that we have implemented for our um, open source application. But before I jump to that, let's briefly talk about um, web application lifecycle. From Stefan's uh, slides, you've seen that we have multiple components and I am right now on the UI part. Uh, this is the component that runs on the um, user uh, in the user browser. So to obviously to create something like this, you would need to uh, firstly create a project. With that, you um, install our CLI tool, create the project with the uh, CLI itself, and then develop, deploy, test. I guess um, everyone here uh, knows this hustle. So um, with Cumulosity, we have you covered there. Um, all of those things you can use also inside of your CI CD pipeline. Um, install CLI, again, use as well the CLI, especially with the deployment you will see now with GitHub Actions, how an application can be deployed. Uh, but from here, eventually you do this part just once, install and create a project, and then while development, you would deploy to your uh, development tenant um, and at some point make a release. So, as I mentioned, I'm here to talk about a specific example here. Um, so that's a framework we've used to test our Cumulosity application builder. Let me briefly show, uh, briefly show you how this application looks like. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, I'm, my, I'm in my browser. All right. Um, so let's have a look into package.json before all. So in package.json, we can see a couple of scripts that are um, actually helping us uh, deploying this um, web application. Um, here is a deployment start, but also, there are some build uh, scripts. There is a start for um, development for the local development um, and things like that. So our CI CD pipeline uses uh, one of those uh, scripts. Let me show you how this Git, um, GitHub workflow looks like. Um, so it's quite a, an easy setup, right? I have here just uh, multiple steps. And the last one, the most probably interesting is where I deploy my application to the tenant. By the way, here you see it's all secrets for par parameter one, two, three. Those are just um, a tenant URL, a user, um, username, password, and things like that. So here we use um, secrets from uh, GitHub to not expose our any our credentials directly in the code. I mean, eventually you could have hard hard coded it here, but that would be considered a very bad practice. Um, 
So yeah, that's the application. Um, maybe a couple of screenshots of the actual app. So this application allows you to create uh, another application. Um, it means I can configure here a couple of dashboards um, and um, basically have new applications without any coding experience. Definitely have a look your free time into application builder. But now we, I wanted to talk to you about um, testing of this application. So it is a separate internal uh, GitHub repository, um, which is called test. And how it is structured, I have it on the next slide. But before that, what kind of problems do we have uh, while releasing application builder? Um, you remember from Stefan's slide that every new major release of Cumulosity requires some testing if you update your app. If you're going to migrate your app to the newest version, you need to, well, at least have some assurance that it works um, as intended to. And this might be, so one of the first requirements, we want to eliminate all manual work for regression testing. And also another one that we want to ease of maintenance and onboarding of new developers. And then uh, we cover here two parts. It's also user interface testing, but also integration testing. So once a new version is released, there are also some microservices that um, um, are expected to work uh, here. And we have a bi-weekly test cycle and then um, we would expect some reporting of the test results. So we've had a look into behavioral driven development here, um, which is at the end of the day, a definition and document documentation of the requirements and features in the natural language. Um, you don't need any technical skills to understand the test scenario. And that was our idea with this test framework. So on the, um, one of the tools uh, that allows it is a cucumber with uh, Gherkin. So Gherkin is a syntax uh, for uh, definition of those um, files and those test scenarios. So here basically on this slide, you it's probably 95% of what you need from Gherkin to really understand all of our test um, scenarios. So here's a feature um, background that gives you some input into test case. Then we have a scenario outline and the actual scenario with the data table. And some major keywords given when, then, and but. You will see it on the example. It's actually quite uh, self-explanatory. So all of those test cases, they are defined in the feature files. And here you see an example of this kind of uh, feature file. As I mentioned, quite self-explanatory. Feature, create an open application. So my scenario outline would be application creation through application builder. And here, is, here are some steps. So first of all, I always start with given, given application builder home screen. So it means my test case starts on the home screen of my app. And then when I log in, enter username, password, login, I create here an application, enter name, icon, context, um, click save button. And then um, I would expect that um, my framework validates that actually application is there and it can be opened. Here under example, uh, what you see is a um, test table or test data table uh, where in the first, so it's um, row number six, I enter my username and here is my username. Then there is some password, application name and so on. All of those ex expected inputs would be represented here. Also cool feature about it, if I wanted to test this exact exactly this use case with just other inputs, 
um, with other input data, I would simply add additional um, row um, into my, my data table. So overview of the test frame, framework that we have used there. Our test manager uh, defines the feature files. It's basically user stories and scenarios that are um, expected to be tested after every release. Um, those feature files, they live in the repository and um, every step um, mentioned here. So let's, let's take an example. Um, enter username uh, and then some username is expected. So there is a step definition for exactly this um, um, line of my feature file. It is implemented with TypeScript and um, basically it is executed. It means once I define this step, I can reuse it everywhere. Next time I'm going to write it, it can be a completely new um, a feature file, a new user story, but obviously I would need to log in every time. So this would reuse just one step definition um, out from multiple uh, feature files. Then there are some utility functions um, that, well, it's not really, it, it's basically some parsing and things like that. Every project has them. But what is also interesting is a, a page object model. I'll talk about it on the um, next slide, just um, keep in mind it for now. So this um, all uh, um, executed with uh, runner.js and eventually it uses protractor, uh, which at the end of the day um, is a wrapper for Selenium. So for those who are not uh, familiar with Selenium, um, it's basically an en engine that allows you to execute um, tests um, across multiple browsers. Um, with, for that, you would, uh, you would use different drivers. So for us, it's actually not that important all driver compatibility, I mean, all browser compatibility, but more if it works in the Chrome, we are fine with that. It means that our integration tests are uh, all right, and then the application is working as, expe as expected. So Protractor would use uh, Selenium, uh, Selenium API um, and uh, some JavaScript bindings to uh, call and actually click all of those uh, buttons that we have identified. Um, in the feature uh, file. <clears throat> so with that, we can um, execute best practices of data-driven testing approach. It means that um, once my feature files are defined, I can, um, again, just give it a input my test data, uh, execute the script and check if my test script, if, if, if I have some expected output as from my test data. Um, with uh, page object model, um, to simplify all of those uh, implementation steps, uh, we have used the page object model, which is uh, basically uh, object-oriented programming in uh, in our test framework. So it means every page of our application has a class. And here is an example of administration page home. And once you um, instantiate those classes, you can then call on them um, different methods and uh, functions like navigate to home page. It means if I have an instance of my administration page, I would simply um, in one of the steps, I would call um, this method navigate to home page. <clears throat> so how is it implemented in our pipeline? Because uh, this is not 
all about the protractor and how we use it, but it's actually part of our CI CD pipeline, right? Uh, we want to, at the end of the day, make sure that um, our application runs as expected. So once we have a new release of um, application builder, we would run our tests, um, then persist test results and notify the team if there is a problem. If there is a problem, you fix those issues on the tests. Sometimes tests would require some change. Um, sometimes it is indeed a bug, then you would need to fix it in the main repository. Uh, but other than that, if there are no issues, then you can just be happy with that and uh, wait until the next re release. One, it's all, I mean, me describing all of this sounds quite uh, interesting and right, that simplifies some development life, but there is obviously a disadvantage to this approach, um, which is you still need to maintain all of those feature files and step definitions um, to keep them up to date with your actual uh, repository with your actual application. So it also means that you would need one, two test engineers that would um, invest time into uh, maintenance of this um, framework. Also, if your application is quite active, then once you create new features, you would need to define obviously new feature files, uh, maybe change older uh, once and so on. So it's not always rainbows and roses. So how is it implemented in the um, GitHub actions? So we use GitHub, in, you've seen here, and uh, here is a snippet out of um, our um, GitHub action that um, executes the, all of the tests um, here. So first of all, um, there is a checkout on our second repository. Uh, then we set up um, our Chrome driver. You would need to, apart from the installation, it's again, this uh, Gherkin is a Node.js application. So you would need to also um, update your web driver manager and then run your tests. Again, we use here sec secrets from um, GitHub Actions. Um, configurable application builder URL, tenant user password, and then uh, the very last step, it doesn't matter if that's a success or a failure, we persist those um, um, test reports. So, um, in summary, um, Cumulosity IoT gives you good, um, sorry, uh, Cumulosity IoT delivers uh, good uh, support for your um, CI CD pipeline, with, uh, especially with the CLI, it's quite easy to deploy. Um, obviously, it's up to you. You just have, you have seen a use case where we use protect, Protractor, but it's completely up to you what tools to select there. Um, just keep in mind that you need, you would need to integrate um, all of that into your development process. Um, again, reminding of either trunk-based or GitHub uh, flow, uh, sorry, Git flow, um, but do have one of the processes there. And uh, focus on the automation for production-ready repositories. Um, and here I, I need to stress, as I mentioned, this still requires some maintenance of your test data, of your test um, executions, of your test and uh, feature files. So if you create some proof of concept or things like that, then obviously you would not require this um, a uh, high part on uh, test automation and um, integration testing. Make sure, but make sure once your application is going to production, once you are kind of, um, once you know what 
your users is going to be use, uh, is going to be expecting from your application make sure to test those uh, simple use cases and with that uh, we are open for your questions i've just opened the mics so if you have a question um, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask the question or you can just write it to the chat and we repeat the question yeah, I have a question. So I see that in the GitHub action, uh, you are using the agents, uh, GitHub hosted agents, or you're using self hosted agents. Did you get the yeah. question? No, no, I don't think so. Can you can you please repeat? Yeah, so you're using GitHub action, right? Yeah. So where uh, so you are using this? Uh, who is the then where is the then where is the agent who is running that uh, this thing? Means so you are using GitHub hosted agents or you are using self hosted agent GitHub actions that will run in your hosted uh, in your local and then it will run it. Okay, so let's pass that. So question. I guess I guess. No, it's. I, I guess I got it. So the question is, uh, who operates our GitHub and to where no. those tests uh, are executed? You are right. So GitHub Action is a Zana. It is like a Jenkins. It is a like a ADU agent. It is like a, um, uh, any Zana tool, GitLab. So so where it is hosted? So you are using uh, the GitHub hosted agents, or you are using self-hosted agents? We're using the um, for this one. We have an we have a GitHub Enterprise version in the cloud, and we're using the agents in the cloud of GitHub. Okay, we don't so have our own. Second, and most of the actions which is written, it is written. You prefer to have it in the TypeScript or Bash because you can write the flows steps. So I see you are using TypeScript. If understanding is correct. Yeah, that's that's right. In in this particular uh, case, we use TypeScript. But you are, it's completely up to you if you prefer to write me, maybe even directly using Selenium, my API. It's, it's, you are free to decide. It also depends what kind of team expertise you have, right? It's not just, um, here's the tool, go and use it. Um, it has to fit your uh, particular situation. Okay. And I see that, uh, uh, so this actions which you are building and you are publishing into the marketplace or the, you are consuming this actions uh, which is already available because in the in the slide you have written uh, um, in, in one of the slide i see that you are passing the parameters so where is that means i did not get so you are publishing you are creating the actions and publishing to the marketplace and then you are consuming or you are not publishing at all what were the actions you developed mm -hmm. Oh, so it's it's probably more about how do we connect it to how do we connect those two repositories? One is application builder, and the other is a, a test repository. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So you said that it is a hard coded. So hard coded means either we can pass it that hard coded. So what is that? I mean, means you are talking about any secret keys or in one of the slide. I don't know. Means if you can send the slide, that will that will be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, let me just reshare my screen. Um, you're most probably talking about my part, right? Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, the just web. So yeah, where, where, yeah. Examples. You said that we gave the password. So in one of the slide, not this slide, but one of the slide you mentioned one slash parameter, something like that. I think the secrets. Secrets, yes. Oh, yes. all right, all right, got it. Here. Um, yes, yes. This this comes. Uh, let me maybe open that. Um, so this comes from uh, main YAML execution uh, Git flow. Um, Sorry, GitHub workflow file is how it's called. And secrets, um, this is something that I configure here directly under settings. Um, I have somewhere, um, 
some here here are my secrets and for actions i've defined here application builder url for example you see there are a bunch of different secrets that i use for mm -hmm. so this repository so this okay. okay so you are using in the local itself okay let's go to the workflow yeah. which code yeah uh, mm -hmm. okay and the first one uh, uh, uh no no the the actions uh where that was this this is okay okay well so use action this is, slash checkout yeah. what is that action slash checkout this is from the use action slash checkout this is from the marketplace or checkout yeah what is that it is doing mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's um, GitHub. So GitHub gives you some tools to, for example, check out the latest code of your repository. So this every run is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, every run is executed in the uh, on some Kubernetes cluster behind uh, GitHub. And at the end of the day, you would need to check out this repository itself. So it no, gets no, this so file, okay. yeah. My question, you wrote actions, use actions slash, what is that action terms means it is, uh, and slash checkout at version V2, and then again, action slash node, uh, setup node one, what are this, yes, if you can help, yeah. Yeah, so this, this, this comes maybe from I can jump GitHub, in. yeah. You know, sure, exactly, exactly, sorry. Um, this comes from the marketplace um, um, at, at GitHub. If you create a new workflow at, at GitHub, um, you have some templates. I call it template, not marketplace. And on the on the templates, you have for multiple programming language, even for um, the base. I would say the basic uh, GitHub functionality, like checking out the source code and every check in on, on on source code, or on every release, maybe um, you have some triggers. But we also have some actions what should be done. And this actually saying, OK, this is the main uh, action, checking out the code. Then I will set up node. Uh, this is a different, this is an another action which is provided by the, by the so-called marketplace as a template. And for Python, for example, we have the same, that you can actually set up Python in version 3 um, and so on. And so you can use this right away. There's a lot of templates. And uh, you're also asking if you're providing it back to the marketplace. No, we don't do this here because it's the so private. That, okay, so 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 that's also in the uh, below that you have see actions upload artifacts. This is another one, yeah, that we can actually upload artifact yeah. back to the repository on a specific path. This is a, another default um action we can use here to use okay so whichever the access which is we are going to consume from the marketplace we are going to use the keyword action slash use that marketplace particular action yeah this. yeah okay thanks there's a pretty good um github documentation about all the available actions okay so you, 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 will be, uh, you will be sending this slide deck right slide yes. deck that uh, the two repos which you showed for the dev and the uh, test you will be also sharing the repos as well right we will we will share the repository of the application builder the other one is um, private i guess um but i okay. will also share the the slides to the to the event sure sounds good thank you and there's also the links in the slides sure sure thanks any other question i just have a remark to uh, the question also raised by Shashi Khan regarding the runner. Um, so also, I just tried that. And with uh, if you don't have the avail availability of an um, hosted runner, it's also very easy to set up your own self-hosted runner, either if you have a Linux operating system just on your system yourself, or you can launch it like a tiny, wherever in, in Azure, a tiny Linux VM. And the setup really just takes five minutes. Set up. There's a very good uh, description from from GitHub to set up a self-hosted runner, install it, you link it to your repository, and that's done. And then it works. So also that that's very easy to to use. So maybe cool. maybe maybe to summarize it a little bit more because I don't know everybody is familiar with GitHub Actions. The GitHub Actions we have um, a service uh, where we can actually run all the um, the we have some some resources from GitHub we can use. And what Kai actually mentioned is that you don't have to use the cloud resources from GitHub, but you can host your own runner. And he's referring that you can do this very easily. And we also did this in several projects ourselves that we set up our own runners and um, 
um, executed all the pipeline, the build, the testing on our runners and not on the GitHub cloud um, for several reasons. But main reason is that the resources you uh, using, if you have a very complex pipeline, a lot of complex projects, from GitHub, this is limited. Yeah, so you have only a limited uh, amount of resources available there. And if you want to still want to um, you execute your pipeline regularly, do the full automation, then uh, it's a valid setup that you set up your own runner. Got it. So okay. So I, I think so. In the beginning, we can use the GitHub hosted runner, and uh, I will also ask the team because they are more familiar with uh, Node.js. So they are, it is very good to have at least the type script because. Uh, uh, we have the uh, the new versions in the type skit schema and all that so that's fine because it gives a very good file structure so that's better yeah yeah ikma 8 ikma 8 right ikma something like that yeah sure any other questions if there are no any other questions i i already posted the question in the in the chat because i'm interested what you are interested in in the as a topic for the next ev uh, uh, event series for developers of course of course i have some topics in my mind but i want to get your feedback of course so if you have so anything the only one session which we had today or we have a many sessions means on going sessions i don't know because i got the invite this is just the kick off this is just the kick off oh. of a regular event for iot developers it will not only be about ci cd and the web development it will can focus microservice development it can focus how we can leverage the open source tooling we provide. It can um, contain things like uh, web development that we, for example, um, reusing the data grid of Comolosity in an efficient way, maybe in a, as an example that we get some hands-on session. I'm very open to any topic of your choice. So if you have anything in your mind, feel free to post it to the chat or even after that meeting, um, write me an email. Um, or get in contact with me and um, add me add me your wish add your wish to me so I can actually schedule a, a, a series uh, in a, an event in the series. Thanks. Thank you. So if there are no other questions left, um, thank you, Nick. Um, thank you all for participating in this uh, event, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.